Telephone time. Telephone time with the stories of John Nesbitt. How do you do, everyone? This is to be one of the great stories of time in which hope and the beautiful are balanced with despair and the terrible. We will have to travel through much darkness together, but when we arrive, I believe we will like what we will see. The place was France. The time, the year 1792. In the early spring of that year, I believe. But the place might have been anywhere, and the time might have been any year for the past 25 centuries. And the people involved might have been ourselves. With one exception. Philippe Pinel, I believe, is an exception among men. He was kind and gentle, but he was stubborn as a mule. He was a very fine scientist, and yet he always put medicine behind the impulses of his heart. And we have decided to call his story by the words of a man who once wrote, I had to travel through hell before I could see again the stars. Pinel! Terry Pinel! Am I to keep the entire French Revolution waiting for every greedy job seeker who wants to grab an appointment? And for a man who has waited six weeks out there for a job, do you consider me unreasonable to request a prompt appearance? You have been told there is nothing for you, Dr. Pinel. But Citizen Couton... All the hospital appointments have been filled. You are wasting the people's time. But surely, Citizen Couton, there must be some post where I could serve the Republic. I see, Doctor. But in that case, perhaps it's just possible there may be something for a man of your spirit. Thank you. Ah, in fact, Dr. Pennell, I have a position here as director. Chief of staff in charge of La Bicette. La Bicette? But, Citizen Couton, that, that is the lunatic asylum. It's called a hospital here. Actually, the head keeper should receive the appointment. But since your letters are all so impressive... Well, yes or no? I had expected something... Your answer, Doctor. I would like to inspect La Bicetre before I give my answer. Doctor, I will not engage in an afternoon's discussion with you. Now, do you want the appointment or not? I will have a look first. Hey. Make him out of paper. Letting him inspect Labby set for two hours. You will give me your absolutely binding yes or no by tonight. That is all, Doctor. the tour of your grounds, Citizen Boudet. I understand why you complain of being undermanned. Yes, Doctor, and underpaid. I know. I have some experience with hospitals. And now I should like to see the patients. Doctor, no visitor ever goes below. Not even the former director went below. I would like to see the inmates in their quarters, Citizen Boudet. Yes, Doctor. Thank you.
are three more wards below, Doctor. Full, just like this one. Straight ahead, Doctor. Mind you, don't get too close to them. Now I've told you, and I've told you, I can't remember. I can't remember. I've told you. I've told you I can't remember. I can't remember. I've told you. I can't remember. I can't remember. I've told you. I can't remember. to the other wards, Doctor? <laughs> so you had the daylight scared out of you, eh, Doctor? Well, I told you I had nothing else. How did you like it, eh? Citizen Couton, you will please draft my commission for La Bicetre immediately. You accept it then? Yes. Pinel! Pinel, why the devil do you take the job? I am obliged to. For three days and nights, almost without rest, Pinel plunged into the records like a detective searching for some fact in the past lives of the chained beings that could help him to understand what he was to do. And then, at once, he came to his incredible decision. Citizen, I am keeper here. I will not allow it. Must I remind you that I am in charge here now? I say no! Shivan ye! Why shivan ye? We are not weak men, but three of us can scarcely hold him. Three of us? He's the most dangerous. We are going to release these people from their chains. And I wish to begin this morning with Lieutenant Chivigny. My father was keeper here. I was born here. I know lunatic. You will cut Chivigny away from that wall. You will bring him up to that corridor. You will cut off every last manacle and you will turn him loose at the door. Hurry up. Do you think it is easy for me to wait here for him?
Lieutenant Chivigny, you are free. Come in. You no longer have your chains, Lieutenant Chivigny. You may drop your arms. Your manacles are gone. Free him. I warn you, doctor. I said let him go. Now, leave us. On your own head, Doctor. Chivigny, you need no longer be afraid. You are free. Chivigny, listen to me. I am a doctor. I am your friend. You are free. night and see it when it's filled with stars. And so the chains were taken off. And in the year of 1793, while Paris fell into anarchy and shouting mobs ran wild through the streets, the transformation of a prison asylum began. Latour. William Latour. Yes. You remember now, eh? But the other things. When will I remember them? Why don't I remember them? They will come. Give them time, Monsieur Latour. Give them time. She has a request to make, but she is afraid, so I brought her. You might be afraid of Chivigny, Marie, but you're not afraid of me, are you? What do you want? I want... I... Yes? Tell me, please. I want to go home. It's been so long. I know. It's been 13 years, Doctor. 13 years since I have seen my children. I want to go home. 
Of course. Of course you would want to go home. your grandmother, darling. <laughs> and so the release of the patients began, the incurables being released from their chains. And by one of the astounding facts in medical history, more than 60 declared cured and sent back from the pits and cages of La Bicetra into humanity and into the world. It was Pinnell's wish and determination that they should go if they were ready, even the good Chevigny. in my office, not in front of my patients. I'll come where and when I please. I'll come Thanks. where. You will take Chairman Couton to my office, or I will have my guards do it. I will not have my patients upset. Raise this litter. This is the best operated. The best hope for the mentally sick in Europe. It's a clubhouse for madmen. I have compiled 63 case histories. Indisputable proof that with proper care and understanding, the mentally ill can be cured. Here, here, read them. I am not interested. All I know is that Paris is under the rule of the mob. And I am their instrument. Well, what has that got to do with it? Look, doctor. The pamphleteers are already screaming. Liberty, fraternity, equality, also proclaimed in Madhouse. Lunatics released into the Paris streets. Oh. Pinel, do you realize the monstrous thing you have done? You have excited the minds of the mob with your lunatics. How do we know they are lunatics, huh? Even if you put dogs in chains, they become violent. If I were to put you in chains, Citizen Couton, not for 10 years, like the patients here, but for 10 minutes. I hate to think of the violence. They are demanding a full investigation of my administration because of you, Dr. Pinel. You, a civil servant, you are guilty of treason. I have only done what I believe to be right. Today, my friend, even a rumor of treason is enough to send a man to the guillotine. I only know that I am right. I don't quite know what to make of you, Pinel. Either you are a genius or an imbecile. But I warn you, unless you stop releasing your lunatics from Labisset, I shall be forced to arrest you for treason. You understand my position. 
perfectly. But violence has its own way of leaping to a decision. And two nights later, as Pinnell was returning home from a meeting, figures were waiting. The mob ready to cast its violence on a man who had dared to say that the insane were only sick, human beings like the rest of us. A necklace for you, doctor. I'm all right. The man, the one who saved me, where is he? Lie back, doctor. Even ye, it was you. told me never to get angry, but I must pass here on my way home every night, and oh, when I saw them... It was really you. How can I ever repay you? You don't have to. I'm coming back to work for you. Back to La Bicette? Why not? While you are looking after everybody else, I am going to look after you. My friends. My dear lunatics. One of the surprises which I ran into in researching the story of Philippe Pinel is that so many of his ideas and methods are considered the best modern therapy today. For example, his belief that the doctor should give love to his mentally ill patient in order to receive it from the patient is now universally recognized. And also his very bold experiment in sending patients home to their families at quite an early date now also receives tremendous support everywhere. But rather pleasing is that in institutions all over the world, little gardens are frequently to be found and courtyards where the sick people gather to struggle for recovery. And in the memory of a merciful man, they are almost invariably called Pinnell Pavilions. And now we're going to see the clues for the story to come. In one of the most terrifying moments of life for tens of thousands of young American soldiers, they gripped these bright children's rubber balls in their hands and leapt from the warplanes into space. The paratroopers, and among these, one unusual man who gave us our title, the Jumping Parson. So, until next week, when it's time for another story, this is John Nesbitt wishing a goodbye to you all. <laughs>